A surprise sleeper, the Jordan Fly Lockdown is one of the best basketball shoes of 2018. What's good guys, this is Nightwing2303 from weartesters.com. Today's the performance review on these bad boys right here. These things are freaking fantastic. It's a shoe that I didn't even want to play in. Like, I'm just putting it out there, being completely honest. I looked at these and in two seconds I was like, nah, I'm good. I got them in hand. Big thank you to everybody over at East Bay, by the way, for sending these over. If you're interested in grabbing a pair, a link will be in the description box. But like I said, I got these in hand and I sat on them for a couple of days because I was like, I don't, I don't really want to play these you know what I mean they're chunky looking they're bulky looking despite all of that they're incredibly lightweight but I just wasn't like I, I don't know what it was I just I just didn't want to put them on I was like I don't know dude like I just really don't want to wear these I did it because I'm kind of professional so <laughs> I laced them up I ran my first game in them and I was just like kind of shocked I was like yo these are pretty damn good and I haven't played in much since so starting off with the traction I mean we have two of the best and most proven traction patterns that you can use on a basketball shoe the one being herringbone the second being spiral patterns. Both of these things are great because of the fact that they are multi-directional. Spirals move in every single direction, doesn't matter what movement you're doing. Lateral movements, linear movements, it doesn't matter. That circular motion or pattern has got you covered. The same thing with herringbone. The reason why it's in zigzags is because it's the same way either way you look at it. So it's always going to be covering the floor. You know what I'm saying? And just the way that they've implemented both of these things in addition to the compound that they use with the rubber, which is on the softer side. So outdoor hoopers. If you decide to use these outdoors, especially once they become cheap enough, just know that they're not going to last a really long time. But while they do last, you're going to get some just exceptional traction. And this is one of the shoes where, I mean, it's rare nowadays, especially, but this is one of the shoes that I just didn't wipe once. Like I said, between the traction pattern and the rubber compound itself, this was a fantastic setup. I don't know what else to tell you, like how much more simple I can say it. If you're looking for great traction, like if we're going to have a top traction of the year list, these guys might might be number one. At least as of right now, they definitely are or would be number one. Now the cushion on these guys features a lightweight Phylon midsole along with a four foot zoom air unit. And the four foot zoom air unit is not one of those, you know, little rectangle units and stuff that I, you know, sometimes like as long as the Phylon's good enough, but most of the time I don't like just because it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel good. Instead, what we have here is the same exact zoom air unit that you would find in an Air Jordan 13 or an Air Jordan 14, what I would consider to be more of a traditional type of zoom air. Basically, it's this oval shaped zoom air unit. It covers the majority of the four foot area. It's not a super thick unit, but most of the zoom air units never work. They're always between like six to eight millimeters. Like that was like the standard size back in the day. When we started getting 10 millimeters and up, that's when we were like, yo, like that's some really thick zoom air. That's crazy. But this is the zoom air that I fell in love with when I was a kid and I still like it to this day. I mean, it's just one of the best cushions that you could get. It's got a mixture between everything. It's got the springiness that you like to feel underfoot. But it's got some impact protection. You're still low to the ground, so you got that court feel, that low profile feel. Again, like Zoom Air is just the best stuff ever. If you're not going with a great foam, Zoom Air is the way to go as long as it's been implemented properly. Of course, that's just my opinion. Everybody's got their own personal preferences, but if you're asking me, that's my answer. And like I said earlier, the midsole right here just looks chunky. I mean, a lot of the support, which we'll talk about later, is from this midsole here. It looks like something that wouldn't have even released in the 90s or the 2000s. That's how thick it is. Like this looks like I don't know what what like how to explain it it just doesn't look normal it's very thick so yeah it was originally a turnoff like that visual like I don't know about this but I put them on I gave them a go and like I said I just it was awesome man like these things are just fantastic I'm, I'm really surprised very surprised the materials are not anything crazy like I, I would almost consider them to be kind of cheap if you were just to hold it in hand but on foot it's one of the like craziest like differences you know what I mean like I don't know if you've ever like felt something and been like I don't know about that but then you wear it and you're like yo like that's crazy like how did that work it's kind of like what some knits are and some meshes and stuff but basically we have some fuse overlays in the high wear areas as well as the stress zones so high wear areas meaning right here at the toe but then we have it right here on the lacing system again that's a that's a stress zone so there's a lot of torque and tension on that area of the shoe and then the rest of the upper is actually comprised of a woven material it reminds me a little bit of the air jordan 15 but not in the same way this one is definitely like you could feel it it's almost like it's almost like carbon fiber before they like seal it you know what i mean like it's like all of the fibers or threads that you know are woven together and all that stuff it's it's really interesting because each strand or area where it's like hatched over is a bunch of little strands all together so it's like really weird again it kind of gives you that impression that it's cheap upon your first look or first feel but when it's on your foot it's so flexible and forgiving 
thing, but super strong at the same time, even though it's not been like sealed or carbonized or any of that stuff. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but it's really weird, man. Like this is a shoe that you just gotta try. And I know that that sounds weird because I normally don't like push those types of things on you. I'm more along the lines of everybody has their own preferences. You need to respect that and all that stuff, which I, I do. But this is one of those shoes that for sure, like it's like, yo, if you just try these, just give them a chance. I'm almost positive that you're gonna like them. Now the fit on these guys is true to size. Wide footers, I would try them on just to be sure. But if you are buying them online and you happen to have like a really wide foot, especially in the forefoot, I would go up half a size. And the lockdown is actually like the shoe's name, which is weird, and that's exactly what they do. I mean, they lock you into that shoe onto the footbed. It's freaking awesome. And they do it in such a traditional way where I was, again, just really surprised. I don't know if it was a combination between just a traditional lacing system and this material that they use, but whatever it is, it works so well that I was like, man, I feel like these were like made for my feet. Like they feel awesome. They feel like a glove. Something that I think is really cool, very small detail, might be overlooked by some, but the traditional lacing system is very apparent. But there's two areas that I really, really enjoyed. One of which being at the forefoot area. The first two eyelets or lace loops are actually the interior strands. Whereas these three right here are exterior. So like more like straight through the material, very traditional. These two on the bottom are more like the Air Jordan 13 and 14 where it's like kind of inside the material. And what that kind of setup actually does, the reason why that they put it on the Air Jordan in the first place is because when you tighten the shoe, it really envelopes and closes that upper around your foot a lot closer than this kind of like more old school way of doing it. And by putting that in the forefoot, you get a lot of extra forefoot like containment and all that stuff, which I think is great, especially for someone like me where I'm predominantly on my forefoot. And I really enjoy that kind of like really snug, secure fit up there. And then they also have this extra dynamic lacing system right here at the ankle, right before the last eyelet. And that actually is installed and embedded into the footbed there. So it just kind of gives you that extra pull that you would need in the ankle area. So you're really locking in those two zones, which is just fantastic. Those are like the two key areas that I feel are like sometimes overlooked when people are designing this kind of like enclosure or the lacing system. So again, like the name states, the lockdown just, I mean, it's great, man. It's, it's really, really good. Now the overall support, like I was saying earlier, predominantly comes from the midsole. There is an internal heel counter. It's kind of flimsy, but they've extended and exaggerated the midsole right there in the rear of the heel so that it really contains your foot, especially upon lateral movements, just in case. So if you're defending somebody and you need to like stop quickly and all that stuff, you don't want this back of the shoe to like kind of like fold over or break on you. And you definitely don't want your heel to shift over the footbed. And that's exactly what this type of thing does. It prevents that from happening and keeps you on the shoe. Makes it feel like the shoe, despite how it looks, despite how chunky it looks, it makes this shoe feel like you're not wearing one. The forefoot area has a very, very tiny outrigger. This is the one section of the shoe where I definitely would have liked it to have either have been extended or we sit within the midsole just a little bit in the forefoot, much like you do in the rear, just because it would have made that area feel just slightly more secure than what it actually is. But the base is nice and flat, so a lot of stability is still there, more of a, like a natural setup. And then the way that the tooling is actually shaped, it's just got super smooth transition, so you're just riding and coasting in these shoes. It's just, it's an awesome feel. And that pretty much takes care of it. Like I said, these guys are one of the best shoes of the year so far. You can get them for great prices as well. Not only is this one of the best shoes, but it's also one of the best bang for your buck models that's currently available. Like I said before, if you are interested in these guys, a link in the description box below will head you over to eastbay.com where they've got a few different colorways, including this one here. They do ship worldwide for anybody interested. This is a fantastic sneaker. If you want more information, such as a written review, which is fantastic because it wasn't written by me, it was actually written by our other tester, Brian, along with the performance scores, then go ahead and click the link in the description as well. It'll head you over to weartesters.com where you can check that out. Normally I do write up my own thing and do my own scores, but everything that Brian said is just almost taken out of my brain and put onto the website there, including the scorecard. So if you want to know my thoughts, but just, you know, told a little bit better than what I can actually tell you, then go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support. And until next time, guys, have a, well, voice crack. Have a good one.